afford to stand alone. Hence, the need to come to terms with the realities of acceptable and workable transition. President Buhari tax new military leaders on stable Mali and says transition process must be all inclusive. The three people who are on board are finally two lost their lives. Lone survivor of the ill-fated helicopter crash succumbs to death as Accident Investigation Bureau commences investigation. We are going to reverse all those things that were done. 22 computer-based test centers to face prosecution for allegedly defrauding jump candidates. Ahead of Edo and Ondo governorship elections, National Broadcasting Commission wants airing stations. It's a beautiful Friday evening. Thanks for joining us on the Network News. I am Juma Yusuf. Now, the efforts to defeat COVID-19 is being intensified. Let's not lose hope. We will come out strong. Tonight, I'll be reading with two fantastic newscasters, Dr. Oguyemi in Lagos and Felicia Isinjas. Thanks for joining us. We we'll begin with the latest from Mani, as President Mohamedou Buhari has described as welcoming the release of the ousted president of Mali, Ibrahim Keita, by the new military leaders, insisting, however, that the transition process in the country must carry along Malian stakeholders and be completed within 12 months. This, he said, is a critical consideration for the new government to enjoy the cooperation of regional and international community, as well as the possibility of easing the sanctions imposed on Mali. The president was speaking at the second extraordinary summit of the ECOWAS leaders on the socio-political situation in the West African nation. State House correspondent Adam Sambo has details. It is very clear that the ECOWAS engagements with the military leadership in Mali are yet to achieve the desired results in several key areas. President Muhammadu Buhari, who is personally happy to hear of the release of former Malian leader Ibrahim Keita, however insists that embracing democracy and good governance by the new military leadership is crucial to the country's political stability. Nigeria believes that the people of Mali and the military leaders need to appreciate the fragility of their country and the imminent danger which it poses to the citizens of Mali as well as of the ECOWAS sub-region. Mali cannot afford to stand alone. Hence the need to come to terms with the realities of acceptable and workable transition compact which inspires the confidence of all Malians. The president described as imperative that flexibility is demonstrated by the military leaders as they negotiate the fate of their country, taking into account the collective interests of the ECOWAS sub-region. I urge the military leadership to consider the immediate release of all the remaining senior government officials in detention without preconditions. A transition process to be completed in not more than 12 months and the need for Mali's constitutional court to work hand in hand with all the million stakeholders to ensure an early and his free return to democratic government through free, fair and inclusive election. He said Nigeria will, alongside ECOWAS, provide the necessary logistic support to facilitate the conduct of elections towards re-establishing democratic governance in Mali. The extraordinary summit of the West African leaders, third in its series since the political crisis broke out in Mali, considered the report submitted by the ECOWAS Special Envoy, former President Gulag Jonathan, on his mediation mission in Bamako. Among the declarations adopted at the summit were that the transition government must be led by civilians and the constitutional order restored within one year. The ECOWAS leaders also encouraged the Malian military to focus on securing the country faced with severe security threats instead of incursion into governance. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. 
The federal government says Nigeria will continue to support the multinational joint tax force and the discharge of its mandate, despite being at the low ebb of resources caused by COVID-19 and falling oil prices. President Mohamed Buhari made the promise while receiving an audience. The executive secretary, Lake Chad Basin Commission, Ambassador Mamanduho, State House correspondent, Adam Asambo reports that the president also engaged the outgoing Norwegian ambassador to Nigeria. Executive Secretary of the Lake Chad Basin Commission, Ambassador Nuhu Mamman, is also the head of mission multinational joint tax force based in N'Djamena, the Republic of Chad. He is here to give President Muhammad Buhari an update on the proposed recharge of Lake Chad as one of the priorities of the Lake Chad Basin Commission. He told President Buhari, whom he appreciated for his great passion and commitment to the revival of the receding lake, that the governments of China and Italy are greatly supporting the project and positive action soon to commence. Ambassador Maman used the opportunity to commend countries which have contributed troops to multinational joint tax force, saying, however, that kinetic military approach alone would not eradicate insurgency. He said emphasis must be placed on the root causes, particularly poverty. President Muhammad Buhari said despite the paucity of resources, security of Nigeria and that of our neighbors must have pride of place. The president promised to consult with his counterparts of the Lake Chad Basin countries and all other relevant officials on the matter. One thing he however said is certain, they will indeed do their best. Meanwhile, in a virtual farewell meeting with the outgoing Norwegian ambassador, President Buhari expressed delight at the progress made in the nigeria norway relations in the last four years. He commended the envoy for the bilateral accomplishments in the areas of oil and gas, fishing, humanitarian assistance in the northeast, and other benefits that his efforts have brought to Nigeria. The outgoing ambassador, James Peter Kembrut, noted with pride the substantial growth in the economic relations between Nigeria and Norway during his tour of duty. He particularly noted the presence of more than 70 Norwegian companies in the country, as well as the important step by the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund to invest in the Nigerian Stock Exchange. The envoy also cited as a very important achievement the organization of two donor conferences driven by Norway that raised more than $1 billion for development purposes as well as humanitarian assistance in the Northeast. From the State House, Adam Sambo, NTA News. The Ibelo State Governor Professor Babagana Umara Zulum has commended President Muhammadu Buhari for his political will and measures to end terrorism and other forms of criminality across the country. Governor Zulum gave the commendation at the inauguration of the Tukur Burete Institute for War and Peace in Burete, the local government area of Burma State. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa has the details. With this, the Tukubrata Institute for War and Peace, conceived in 2016 as a counter-terrorism museum, has been inaugurated. The institute, situated in Buratai, the local government area of Burno, is part of the Nigerian Army University system, devoted to the study of different warfare with emphasis on asymmetric conflicts and rehabilitation. The Tukubrata Institute aims at training and capacity building for military personnel as well as civilians in counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency operations, humanitarian response, peace conflict and peace building, as well as reconstruction with a view to influencing policy at state and community levels. We shall continue to support our armed forces when we occasionally criticize, we do so with a view to improving on our successes and not out of lack of appreciation. To the Vice Chancellor, Nigerian Army University Bureau, the research institute is among the Nigerian Army's non-kinetic approach in fighting Boko Haram. And it is part of the Nigerian Army's efforts at defeating the Boko Haram insurgency, not only by kinetic force, but intellectually by providing education, that thing which they do not want. The development of Tukubrata Institute for War and Peace began with this bullet-riddled building. It was formerly the house of the chief of army staff, which was attacked by the Boko Haram. And now 
it has metamorphosed into Tukurubota Institute for War and Peace. Staff quarters for the institute were also inaugurated. The institute with six specialized centers has a projection for expansion and collaboration with other research organizations across the country. From Bratai in the local government area of Borno State, Ismail Musa, NTA News. For an update on the ill-fated helicopter crash in Lagos, the pilot and two passengers on board the helicopter that crashed into residential buildings in Lagos have died. Abulade Salami reports that an in-depth investigation is ongoing to unravel the cause of the accident. Ikeja, the state capital of Lagos, was thrown into panic Friday afternoon as a result of a helicopter crash on two residential buildings at number 16 Salvation Road, Okwebi. 77-year-old EMC Oluwole, owner of one of the affected buildings, was lucky to have narrowly escaped the incident. And therefore, I cannot thank God enough because it would have been my own pose under the helicopter. Because probably I would have been carrying something to the back and then the helicopter will just land. But because this is not my turn and God said I will not die that way. Swift response of emergency responders limited the destruction of property and loss of more lives. While the black box of the ill-fated helicopter has been retrieved and the wreckage of the helicopter taken to the premises of the Accident Investigation Bureau. It is pertinent to note that our major challenge is crowd and with the assistance of the Commissioner of Police of Lagos State and his team, we are able to be on top of crowd control. Police arrived there before the other owner. We handed it back to the experts in writing. So like the passports of the one of them or two of them now are recovered now. So today all the passports now we handed over to the experts in writing. Meanwhile, the scene of the accident has been cut off, while integrity tests will be run on the two affected structures by the state government. In Lagos, Abeladi Salami, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Mohamedou Buhari has commiserated with family, friends and associates of the victims of the Bell 206 helicopter operated by Quorum Aviation, which crashed Friday into a building in Okwebi, Lagos State, while the nation awaits report of investigation into the accident by the aviation regulatory agencies. The President prays that God will console the bereaved families, grant peace to the souls of the dead and speedy recovery to the injured. The Accident Investigation Bureau, AIB, says it has commenced investigations into an accident involving a helicopter operated by Quorum Aviation. A statement by the General Manager of Public Affairs, Tunji Oketumbi, says investigations have been dispatched to the scene. Investigators have been dispatched to the scene of the accident, which claimed the lives of three people on board, urging members of the public to assist with video clips, relevant evidence, and information that could lead and assist with the investigation. The Bureau also appealed to the members of the public not to assume the cause of the accident until formal report is released. To other matters now, President Mohamedou Buhari fully states with Metropolitan Archbishop of Abuja, Most Reverend Ignatius Ayuke Gama, on conferral of the Parium for the Sea of Abuja by Pope Francis, which is in recognition of his dedication to promoting unity, peace, and justice. President Buhari joins all Christians, particularly the Catholic family, friends, and associates of the highly revered clergyman in celebrating the honor by the Papa. That the symbol of conferred jurisdictional authority to promote peace, harmony, and unity is most deserved. The president salutes the Metropolitan Archbishop of Abuja for always projecting values of love and working diligently to promote welfare of citizens in the country. In the history of the Catholic Church in Nigeria, a Pelium ceremony has held with Archbishop of Abuja Catholic Archdiocese and the Metropolitan of the Ecclesiastical Province of Abuja, Most Reverend Ignatius Kegama as recipient. Elizabeth Omori reports that this is the first time a Pelium ceremony will be taking place outside the Vatican City in Rome. Apostolic Nuno Archbishop Antonio Giordo Filippazzi there 
decorated Archbishop Ignatius Gagama with the pallium, a ceremony held in Nigeria as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. The pallium is a special vestment worn by high-ranking archbishops with metropolitan authority, which symbolizes the archbishop's responsibility as a priest and sign of his communion with the Holy See. It's not just answering the name archbishop, but doing something to promote deep sincere and genuine communion and unity. For the Catholic faithful, the new mantle of leadership will further promote the propagation of the gospel of Christ in service to humanity. This will strengthen our faith to serve God faithfully in all that we do. It reinforces the cardinal belief about the unity and universality of the church. The Archbishop used the occasion to call for peace, especially in southern Kaduna, and urged the government to intensify efforts in tackling insecurity. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, Enchi News. In an effort to allay fears expressed by the leadership of the church about the recently enacted Companies and Allied Matters Act, Kama 2020, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo says concerns can be processed through possible amendment of the contentious sector section of the law through a proposal to the National Assembly, as the nation is in a democracy. The Vice President said this during a conversation at the ongoing Nigerian Bar Association Annual General Conference, where he said the Kama law is a massive legislation that covers a wide range of issues and a small portion of it called the Incorporated Trustees Section regulates charities that affect the church. The Vice President explained that churches, mosques and church organizations are regarded as charities and it is the Incorporated Trustees Section of the Companies and Allied Matters Act that has become controversial. We'll take a break now. More reports when we return, don't go away. New data plans with night bars and doors. Dial star triple seven hash. Glow unlimited. At Elizabeth Autoland, we don't just sell quality, we build quality. JAC Motors, assembled in Nigeria by Elizabeth Autoland. of JAC Moto brands by members of the public and private sectors. JAC Motors are clearly built with one purpose in mind. They are built to serve. Elizade Autoland, sole distributor of JAC Motors in Nigeria.
your DSTV or go TV subscription easily but our office day fast small if you use our app to recharge or fix errors no wahala or if you like one on one service our sabi men agents full grand then be certified field service agent if it help you with any big sabi men day for you if you want to recharge your subscription and sharply activate your account if it help you resolve any technical challenge or customer inquiry how you go take no them now with them sabi man jacket branded face cap and boxy box machine with them hold now so you go sabi our sabi men for your area so whether na my dstv app my go tv app or sabi men with they your area make sure say you continue to enjoy world class quality entertainment anytime at your convenience we did your side Welcome back. Towards a strong and united party, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo has received two members of the APC Reconciliation Committee who came to the presidential villa for the Vice President's input on the best way towards uniting all members of the All Progressives Congress. State House Correspondent Jide Onifadi tells us more. Five man committee chaired by Governor Abubakar Badaru of Jigawa State, set up by the party with a mandate to reconcile all aggrieved members of the party, has since commenced its assignment with a visit to Imo, Ogun, and Oyo states, describing the vice president as one with wealth of information and great desire to see that his returns to the party. The committee says his advice at this time is crucial. He gave us some suggestion on how to do the job uh, really very well. In addition to that, I, I briefed him on our meeting today for the Zero Oil Committee. We met today and are chatting uh, uh, um, progress and a new agenda for uh, the development of uh, uh, non-oil export. He's very much interested in reconciliation within the party. So to guide us, and so we're taking the advice and we're going back. The delegation comprising Governor Badaru and Governor Samuel Along of Plateau State also comment on the nation's economy and the crisis in southern Kaduna. Uh, if we look at our competitiveness in both agriculture, solid minerals, service industry, we will be able to cover our oil. Uh, our production in agriculture has increased tremendously over the year. We have to just keep pushing and make sure that uh, we produce competitively globally and then we will have enough for ourselves and uh, a lot of export. I think that the president has done a lot of efforts in this security. We've established also there has been several commissions, committees, interventions and several security meetings with security heads. But I'm very hopeful that with some of these measures put in place, very soon, crisis insecurity will be a thing of the past. Other members of the APC Reconciliation Committee are Governor Karadi Fayemi of Ekiti State, Governor Abdullah Isule of Nasarawa State, and Governor Inwa Yahaya of Gombe State. In the State House, Jude Unifade, NJ News. 
The National Broadcasting Commission has charged broadcast stations not to allow politicians use their media outfit to heat up the polity as the Edo and Ondo governorship election draw near. The acting director general of the commission, Professor Armstrong Idachaba, who gave the charge in Okure at a stakeholders meeting on political broadcast, said the commission will not hesitate to punish airing stations. Olubulok Bukola Ado has details. The people of Ondo State get set for the October 10 governorship election. Political parties and their gladiators are strategizing to outsmart one another as they converse for votes in order not to heat up the polity and ensure a level playing ground for all the parties the national broadcasting commission hosted stakeholders in the state to a one-day seminar the need for broadcast stations not to become biased mouthpieces of politicians and political parties avoidance of hate speech and usage of indecent languages by politicians were some of the discourse Political news supposed to enlighten, to educate the public. Uh, once there is a commercial bias, of course, the editorial uh, opinion or slant becomes also partisan. Paper presentations with the topics, political coverage in the broadcast media, the need for professionalism, and political broadcasts, what the court says, were also delivered at the event. We ask that you ensure that your people don't mingle with politicians or political associations as if they are working for them. Participants commended NBC, saying the lecture is a reminder of the broadcasting codes which are appropriate for this period. We've always been trying to ensure that uh, uh, the interests of the Nigerian nation is served. You know that we serve members of the public. We have to be very, very alive to our responsibility in terms of what we give out to members of the public. Broadcasters politicians, security agencies, and heads of media organizations in Ondo State were part of the meeting in Akure, Olubukola, Aduo, NTA News. The People's Democratic Party has inaugurated its National Campaign Council for the October 10 Ondo State Governorship Election. Fimo Chirifu Yusuf reports that Governor of Oyo State, Shea Makindi, is Chairman of the Campaign Council. National Chairman of the PDP, Uche Secondos, inaugurating the 145-member National Campaign Council for the October 10 Undo State Governorship election. Key among the tasks before the Campaign Council is the need to fashion out a peaceful and vibrant campaign strategy towards the victory of the party's candidate in the state, Iitayo Jagade S.A.N. That by the grace of God, after election and final ceremony, we should take the government back to the people. Chairman of the Campaign Council, Governor Shei Makinde of Oyo State, says the council will go into the election as one united family. Elections are about choices. And the people of Ondo State must come out on 10th October to make the right choice. Before February 2021, there will be a Speakers, including former governorship aspirants of the PDP, assured of working collectively for the victory of the party come October 10. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. The All Progressives Congress has commended President Muhammadu Buhari on the composition of the governing council of the newly established National Commission for Persons with Disability in line with the Discrimination Against Persons with Disabilities Prohibition Act 2019. Yakini Nabina, Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the APC, in a statement described the gesture as rewarding after years of struggle by the disabled community in Nigeria for a commission. The APC noted that, according to the World Health Organization, about 15% of Nigeria's population, or at least 25 million people, have a disability. Many of them face a number of human rights abuses, including stigma, discrimination, violence, and lack of access to health care, housing, and education. The party promised to promote the rights and dignity of persons with disabilities and all vulnerable groups in Nigeria in the spirit of progressives. 
Now, the federal government's determination to build infrastructure is no mean feat. Such projects are either completed or ongoing at the length, on, throughout the length and breadth of the country. Putin smiles on the faces of the citizens who have displayed confidence in the present administration. Anthony Forson reports that the Minister of Information and Culture, Laya Mohammed, alongside Ministers of Works and Housing and that of Special Duties, inspected the local Opeto Bridge. Opeto Bridge lies on this river which serves as a boundary between Nasarawa and Benue State. Local from Nasara and Oweto from Benue, the two states are known for the agricultural endowment. And so, when the idea for the bridge was conceived, two things were taken into consideration. One, how to move farm produce out of these two states to other parts of the country. And two, to ease the long hours spent by motorists moving from the north to the south and from the south up north as evidence even though some more work still needs to be done with the completion of the bridge. We really thank the federal government, especially the current administration, with vigor and um, with vigor, sincerity and then sympathy that they made it come true for us. We are very grateful. This is to give us a sense of belonging is that we are Nigerians, that Nigerian loves us. The Lord is very bad, but at um, even by this time, if you drive machine here, but now we are driving machine, even motor, you are following. I'm very happy. What is left to be done is the remaining six kilometer stretch to link over to end to the bridge and the 106 kilometer stretch from Nasara to the bridge. With lightning facilities installed on the bridge, all works on the island between the bridges have been completed. We believe that this is the best way to answer the naysayers who continue to rail that they do not know what government is doing with the loan they've taken. What we are trying to showcase is that yes, we've taken loans, but we are making very judicious use of these loans. And while these loans may have a lifespan of 20, 15 years, the roads we are constructing will have a lifespan of 50, 60 years, and it will outlive many of us. This government, in spite of very, very limited resources, also having to borrow is simply doing almost the near impossible in terms of infrastructure. Uh, I continue to wish that President Buhari was president when Nigeria was earning $140 per barrel of oil a day. It would have been a different country. But in spite of that, he continues to give support. His commitment to infrastructure and his understanding of the purpose of infrastructure for growth and development. Upon completion, more traffic will be diverted, especially from Abuja to Lokoja, Ajaguta to Enugu highways to the new bridge. This will reduce traffic flow through Lokoja route and reduction for maintenance work activities, just as there will be more social and political activities along the bridge corridor and, most importantly, reduce journey time and fatigue. Anthony Forson, NTA News. And for the latest on coronavirus pandemic across the world, India records more than 77,000 new coronavirus cases in just one day, just as countries across Europe tightens COVID-19 restriction measures amid rising cases. Joyce Ometu has an update on the pandemic. Countries across Europe are announcing tougher coronavirus control measures as cases surge on the continent. In France, a mask wearing order has been expanded across Paris. The country on Thursday reported its highest one day total of new COVID 19 infections since the end of March. Meanwhile, in Spain, children as young as six will be required to cover their mouth and nose while at school. 
In Germany, officials have called on citizens to stop traveling to countries and regions deemed high risk, and a ban on major events has been extended until the end of the year. In the meantime, the United States has bought 150 million rapid coronavirus tests. Earlier this week, the country's Food and Drug Administration granted emergency approval for the firm's rapid tests, which the company says gives results in 15 minutes. Elsewhere, India has recorded its highest 24-hour figure of new coronavirus cases with 77,266 new infections reported. And statistics published by a coronavirus research center in Johns Hopkins University as at 6 p.m. local time shows that 24,754,783 cases are registered globally. So far, 838,109 deaths have been recorded. On the African continent, the Center for Disease Control has raised concerns about rising cases in Tunisia, Morocco, Uganda, and Burkina Faso. It says that eastern and northern African regions are still recording increases in new cases. The continent has 1,226,465 cases and 28,923 deaths. Of these figures, Nigeria accounts for 53,317 cases, 40,726 recoveries, with 1,011 fatalities. And that's a global update on COVID-19. I am Joyce Ometu. To education now, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Education, Sonia Echeno, has refuted allegation that there is COVID-19 cases in some unity colleges in the country. In a statement, the Permanent Secretary indicates that he received reports from all the 104 unity colleges in the last couple of days, which did not show any suspected case of COVID-19 or infectious diseases across the country. While commending the principles of the federal government unity colleges over the sound implementation of COVID-19 protocols, a channel urged all school authorities to keep to the strict enforcement of COVID-19 protocols in their areas of jurisdiction. He said the safety record achieved with the exit classes will determine the next step to take with the rest of the classes with regards to the opening dates. Now, 22 institutions and computer-based test centers have been delisted and will be prosecuted for allegedly defrauding JAM candidates. JAM Registrar Professor Ishak Oloedi said of this while interacting with the representatives of the airing institutions. Online Ka Ojo reports. Defrauding of JAM candidates by CBT centers has been a recurring decimal. The latest is 22 institutions from nine states which defrauded candidates without the use of OTP to make changes for candidates seeking change of institutions to the tune of more than 59 million naira. Charging the candidates more than the stipulated amount of 2,500 naira for the changes. We are going to reverse all those things that were done. Owing to the coronavirus pandemic, OTP, which is a password, was introduced by JAM to reduce the spread of the virus as candidates seeking changes do not have to turn print. The board, however, frowns at this corrupt practice by the CBT centers, which contravenes its rules. When you own more than one center, and one center out of two or three commits an offense, we will delist every center you own. To this, some of the CBT centers' operators own up to the crime. Um, let me start by also sending an apology for whatever... Um, uh, misconduct you might have perpetrated. Although the candidates will no longer pay another fee, JAM, however, urges candidates who have compromised their details to also ensure they change their password and the writing is done. Online Kaujo, NTA News. The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has urged all well-meaning Nigerians with capacity to support the police hospital with medical facilities. The IGP made the plea while receiving hospital equipment valued at over 100 million naira from the Sa Emaka Foundation in Abuja. Francis from reports. This hospital in Fano Moliga State, the Nigeria police does not have a referral hospital. It is in the light of this that the Nigeria police is making efforts 
to upgrade Muhammadu Buhari Place Hospital in Abuja to a standard hospital as part of his contribution to the well-being of the Nigeria Place personnel. Sir Emeka of All Foundation presented 50 hospital beds, medical consumables and a generating set to the police hospital Abuja. The many um, items here that are not here yet, but we will make sure that within the next 30 days those, those materials will be here. We will make sure that we will continue to come and upgrade and if there are areas again of further cooperation, the Inspector General of Police is appreciative of the gesture and made more requests for more of such. We want Sir uh, Emeka of All Foundation to consider providing the hospital with echo cardiograph machine. We also need 4D ultrasound machine. We need a mammogram machine. We need endoscopy machine. <laughs> The hospital is expected to cater for seven members of the force, retirees, their immediate families, detainees in police cell, and members of the public. In Abuja, Franks is from NTA News. And Dr. Ogoyeme is in Lagos with more reports on NTA Network News. Hello, Dr. Quite an unfortunate incident today in Lagos. Jumai. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development has assured Nigerians of the commitment of the President Mohamedou Buhari-led administration to continue to engender food safety and security as well as boost local production in agricultural businesses at the grassroots. The Minister gave the assurance during a courtesy visit to Lagos State Governor Babajide Sanwilu at the Lagos State Government House Ikeja. Nosa Usula reports. Food insecurity is a serious concern throughout sub-Saharan Africa prior to the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. The minister was on a working visit to some government and private-owned agricultural facilities in Lagos State, commended Governor Babajide Sonwolu for ensuring food security during and after the total lockdown due to the pandemic. Agriculture in this country is probably now number one is the prime mover of the economy. And this pandemic that we have and we are still in battling with has reinforced the importance of agriculture, not only in this country, but probably in the entire world. The governor who applauded the federal government for its support since the pandemic reiterated his administration's commitment to increasing the state's food self-sufficiency to 100% adding that the immortal rice mill is near 75% completion. So we did, we are happy. And we thank God that um, the fatality has not been out of proportion. In Lagos, we have less than 2%. You know, so, so even the current Honorable Commissioner for Health himself is in isolation, but he's doing well. Um, just, to do that, just for people to know that um, the virus knew nobody. Governor Sonwolu assured the minister of the continuous support of the state government. In Lagos, Nusa, Usula, NTA News. Time now to take another break. More reports still to come on the network news. Also available in a four tablet street at 50 naira only. Panadol Extra now also available in a four tablet street at 50.
50 Naira only. Panadol Extra, now also available in a 4 tablet strip at 50 Naira only. Sensitivity is a short, sharp pain that people experience when they have something hot or cold getting to the nerve of the tooth. If the sensitivity is left alone, it may get worse. Dentists recommend Sensodyne. It's able to calm the nerve of the tooth. The proof's in the results. It works. Sensitivity is a short, sharp pain that people experience when they have something hot or cold getting to the nerve of the tooth. If the sensitivity is left alone, it may get worse. Dentists recommend Sensodyne. It's able to calm the nerve of the tooth. The proof's in the results. It works. Good to know you're still there. The Nigerian government has expressed deep concern on the insistent harassment of its citizens in Ghana and acts of continuous hostility towards the country by the Ghanaian authorities and will no longer tolerate such. In a statement issued by the Minister of Information and Culture, Laya Mohammed, the federal government, he says, is urgently considering a number of options aimed at ameliorating the situation. The statement adds that the federal government has been documenting the acts of hostility towards Nigeria and Nigerians by the Ghanaian authorities. These hostilities include seizure of the Nigerian mission's property, which the Nigerian government has used as diplomatic premises for almost 50 years demolition of the Nigerian mission's property. These actions are serious breaches of the Vienna Convention. Orders are aggressive and insistent deportations of Nigerians from Ghana and closing of closure of shops belonging to Nigerians. Nigeria has time after time demonstrated its fidelity to the long cordial relations with Ghana. But indications, especially in recent times, are that Nigerian stance is now being taken for granted and its citizens being made targets of harassment and objects of ridicule. This will no longer be tolerated under any guise. In the meantime, the federal government wishes to appeal to its citizens resident in Ghana to remain law-abiding and avoid engaging in self-help despite their ordeal. Now, the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Issa Alifantami, has inaugurated the Chairman of the Digital Transformation Technical Working Group for Phase 1 of federal public institutions with a charge for them to discharge their duties on compliance with the nation's e-government master plan. The Minister expressed the hope that the Chairman will get to work immediately to fast-track the process. This program will go a long way in digitalizing government processes and services in our institution. As we all know, COVID-19 pandemic brought about why digital transformation should be implemented immediately in our institutions, particularly at the federal level. At NIDA, we are taking strategic steps to implement the e-government master plan and digital economy policy for digital Nigeria. The virtual inauguration gently organized by the National Information Technology Development Agency, NIDA, and the ministry also featured the launch of Nigerian Government Enterprise Architecture Portal. The Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Zubiru Dada, has inaugurated a 14-member ad hoc committee on the establishment of the Nigerian Diaspora Investment Trust Fund with a mandate to advise on the mission, sources and objectives of the fund. Uchi Oguchuku was at the virtual inauguration in Abuja. The Diaspora Commission is mandated by the Act to harness the resources, skills and talents of the over 17 million Nigerians in Diaspora for national development, setting up a private sector-led Nigerian Diaspora Investment Trust Fund is one of the three point outcomes of the first Nigeria Diaspora Investment Summit in 2018 to assist in achieving the goal. This committee is set up with Nigerians of high repute people of integrity and who understand the investment climate globally and are patriotic enough to assist the Nigerian diaspora to complement government's efforts in national development. The committees to advise did come on the following. The mission and objectives of the trust fund, the structure of the fund, especially 
a private sector led and driven by the Nigerians in the diaspora. The ad hoc committee has Dr. Ali Garba as chairman and Professor Mani Anebunam as co chairman. It is expected to submit a report in one month as a guide to the establishment and takeoff of the trust fund. Uchi Ugochuhu, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. Time to join Felicia in our just studio for more reports. Hello, Felicia. Hello, Jumai. Welcome to JOS. The Independent National Electoral Commission, Plateau State, has declared its readiness to conduct by-election for the Plateau Southern Senatorial District seat come October 31st, 2020. This came to fall during a meeting held with major key players in the political process in the state at the INEX office in Jos, attended by party leaders, security agencies, civil societies, and faith-based organizations. Organizations. Caleb Guchin reports. The agenda was brief but comprehensive, even as the resident electoral commissioner, Malam Hali Lupai, confirmed that all is set for the elections. He is fully prepared to conduct the free, fair, credible, successful election. Heads of department took turns to reiterate INEX readiness and provide explanation to some issues that are germane to the conduct of the election. First plans must be born at all times. However, you may be requested to lower your first plan for proper identification during vote and when or where necessary. Representatives of the various stakeholders offered some suggestions as well as questions on how to achieve a successful outtake. The by-election for the Plateau Southern Central District comprises of six local government areas, all with 671,209 registered voters. The Southern Central District seat was declared vacant following the death of Senator Ignatius Longjohn in February this year. In George Caleb Gochin, NT News. Nigerians have applauded the re-election of Dr. Akiwumi Adeshina as the President African Development Bank. These key players in just say his re-election will strengthen the socio-economic development of Nigeria and help small-scale businesses to thrive. Rire Silvanus Lot has details. Founded in 1964, the African Development Bank was established to fight poverty, improve living conditions, and be a financial provider for African governments and private businesses investing in the region. With the re-election of Akinwumi Adeshina to supervise the affairs of the bank, the move has been described as being worthy and an opportunity for Nigeria to capitalize on the gains. He has developed quite a robust structure whereby Africans will be able to borrow from African Development Bank at lower interest rates in order to strengthen the agricultural value chain. The economy of Africa will surely improve because looking at the kind of person he is, he takes pleasure in ensuring that every small scale holder is working towards developing himself, developing the nation, and then Africa at large. With the devastation caused by COVID-19 on world economies, the appointment has been seen as a booster for many crushed businesses. Africans will be able to also borrow to strengthen livelihood among our people and also small-scale businesses to strengthen them because they are the backbone of our economy. Mr. Adeshina, who is the first Nigerian to be elected to the position, was first elected in May 2015. In Jos, Rinred Silvanus Lot, NTA News. You're still on to Network News. More reports in Abuja as we rejoin Jumai. Thank you, Felicia. Federal government insists on the relocation of illegal occupants of National Stadium Lagos as Arsenal and Liverpool prepare to face off in the Community Shield on Saturday. Details with Badi Adele on Sports Update. 
As the date for the occupants of the National Stadium Lagos to relocate draws nearer, the federal government says the decision is not to winch on anybody but the desire of the present administration to bring back the lost glory of the edifice. Minister of Youth and Sports Development Sunday Diary says President Muhammad Buhari is committed to giving all the stadia a facelift. The National Stadium Surulere is not a market that you cannot build on illegality. In the meantime, River State Government, the owners of Rivers United, have vowed to take the league management company and the Nigeria Football Federation to the Court of Arbitration for Sports over the decision to end the 2019-2020 MPFL season on points per game system. The state government says picking a Yimba to represent the country at the CAF Champions League next season at the expense of Rivers United is not fair and does not reflect the true spirit of sportsmanship. We cannot jump and go to head to head. If they are saying that for fairness, we should respect the fact that we didn't play the Yimba in Porta Court. Still on football, 33 days after the 2019-2020 season ended, English football returns on Saturday with Premier League champions Liverpool trading tackles with FA Cup winners Asna in the community showed the annual charity football match has been the traditional curtain raiser for the new English season. And in tennis, the 2020 US Open begins on Monday in a spectator-less quarantine bubble at the US National Tennis Center in New York with COVID-19 testing and other measures designed to safeguard players and officials in Abuja, Badi, Adeleye, NT News. Lovely weather in Abuja today. Let's see what it would look like tomorrow. For tonight, thank you so much for your time. I am Juma Yusuf.